Okay, now that your car is built, you're ready to go. You've watched the engine tuning video, so you understand the basics now. What's the next thing you need to do? Kick you in the balls. No, you need to brake in your engine. The thing is that when the engines are new, you can't just start running them normally. You need to brake them in. And there are all kinds of theories about what the right way to do it is, but I decided I would break this down really simply. Together, we're going to figure out what's really important. What, why do we need to break in engines? Because I think that if you understand the reasons behind something, then everything will begin to make sense. And probably you'll also follow the advice because it makes sense to you. We have a new engine. It's brand new and shiny. We don't want to destroy it. What do we do? Today it's a trend to send out your engines to have them broken in. So you pay someone to use this oil bath machine uh, to break in your new engine. Then they send it back to you, you install it in the car, and you know what? You still need to break it in a bit, even after that. So while that oil bath break-ins are probably fine, they aren't really necessary in my opinion. It's not something that you need to do you might as well do it yourself and save the money. At the end of this video, we'll get back to the oil bath braking. But now let's talk about how you can break in your engine on your own. The reason you need to break in your engine is actually quite simple. To manufacture one of these engines is really hard. It's complicated. What makes it difficult is the materials you have to use, the surface finish, the heat treatments and the fact that when an engine runs it heats up and when metal heats up it expands so with all the different materials used in an engine like this what needs to happen is all those parts need to expand together as they get hot another thing is that the entire engine isn't the same temperature so internally there, there are areas that are at a higher temperature than others while you run the engine. So all of these things together contribute to the fact that it's really challenging to manufacture and build a great nitro engine. So what the manufacturers do is they use really tight tolerances on all the parts. And when an engine is brand new, it's actually really hard to turn over. The sleeve or liner in the engine is actually slightly tapered. So as the piston moves up, it gets tighter and tighter. So if, if I try to turn the flywheel here on a new engine, it's actually really tight to turn and it, it sticks at top dead center, actually. See, now it's stuck. I need to really turn it hard to get it over that point. That's because the compression is really high. Now, if I was just to start this engine now, it would put a lot of strain on the internal parts, on the con rod, on the crankshaft pin. All the moving parts would be under a lot of strain because there's so much compression and the tolerances are so tight. Once the engine is running, it heats up. And like I already said, when metal heats up, it expands. That means that the friction between the parts would be slightly less and it would turn over easier. The idea of breaking in an engine is to run an engine at its operating temperature so that all the parts have expanded to the appropriate amount and then the parts will wear in and bed in together. So the piston and the liner will break in to match each other perfectly. All the moving parts in the engine need to be a perfect fit and they need to be a perfect fit after they have expanded. Think of it like this. An engine is like a symphony orchestra. Here we go again. <laughs> Bear with me. I got a point. All the different parts in the engine are doing different things. They're playing different instruments. They react to heat differently. They expand to a different amount, but they all need to work together. After they are saturated with heat, after they have expanded, they need to fit 
together perfectly and work together in harmony. Otherwise, the orchestra will sound bad and the engine will run bad. So all the different components need to work together, even though they are doing slightly different things within the engine. Now, it's impossible to build an engine that's just perfect from the get-go. This is why breaking in is important. It's like practice for an orchestra. Each individual can be just perfect on their own, but when they get together and they start playing, they need to practice, they need to match each, each other, they need to learn to play together. With the engine, that practice is the break-in. The break-in defines how the different parts of the engine interact and how good the performance of the engine will be once it's fully broken in. So the break-in is really a very important process. So with this basic knowledge, we can come to two conclusions. The first is that when we have a new engine and we want to start the engine, we need to preheat it because we don't want to start it when it's cold because the compression is really high and it's going to put strain on all the internal parts. So we use a heat gun, for example. By warming up the case, and saturating the engine with, with heat, we make sure that the parts expand and the compression is lower. So when we start the engine, there will be a lot less strain on the internal parts. The second thing that we've understood now is that when we are breaking in the engine, we need to get it to operating temperature. That's the whole point. The engine needs to be running at the correct temperature so that all the parts have expanded the appropriate amount. That means that the engine will then break in correctly. Now, because the engine is so tight, there's a lot of friction between the parts. And that means that the temperature will be higher than on a fully broken in engine. Uh, because of that, we run a rich mixture. Another reason for running a rich mixture during break-in is that we don't want all the oil and fuel to burn up. We want there to be some fuel left over in the engine so that the oil in the fuel can lubricate the parts. Okay, so we've figured out three different things. We want to preheat the engine before we start it. Then once it's running, we, we want to run the engine at its operating temperature. And we want to make sure that when the engine is at its operating temperature, the tune is rich. That means that there will be oil left over in the engine that lubricates the parts. So now let's take a look at a video and I'll show you the three steps to the engine braking process that I use.
A few moments later Two very boring minutes later Fifteen minutes later.
one mistake people tend to make is they run a very rich setting but they aren't paying attention to the uh, temperature and they end up running the engine too cold and when you do that it doesn't break in correctly because all the parts haven't expanded to the appropriate amount so pay attention to the temperature of the engine while you're breaking it in i drive one fuel bottle this way so four tanks of fuel and again i monitor the temperature i make sure that the temperature stays stable i wrap the cooling head because i want to run a very rich mixture at this point wrapping the cooling head means that i can run a richer setting without the engine being too cold so i'm artificially uh, keeping heat in the engine running a super rich setting so i have lubrication but then covering the cooling head to make sure that engine temperature stays high When you are going through this process, it also matters how you drive. If you run in a figure eight, you will be doing a very consistent and uh, smooth type of driving. So if you roll on the throttle smoothly, exit the corner, do a short straight, then let off the throttle again, turn into a corner, then roll on the throttle again and repeat, you're doing a constant uh, movement i should say you aren't slowing down too much accelerating from a dead stop you're moving all along it's uh, easy for the engine and also you'll be able to maintain a constant sort of load on the engine from lap to lap to lap and you'll be able to keep a very consistent temperature in the engine and that's key when you're breaking it in minutes later
A few moments later Fifteen minutes later Five minutes later. So there you go, that's how I brake in my engines and I've noticed that patience is key. When I rush it, I don't do it properly, the engine isn't quite as good oftentimes. Uh, it's not overly complicated, it's just the fact that you need to be patient. A temp gun is really important during braking because it's the only way you can know that your engine is running at the correct temperature. Once it's fully broken in, Temping the engine isn't that important because you know when the tune is good, the temp will be fine. But during braking, you don't know that because the tune will be very rich when the temperature is correct. So you need to be patient and use a temp gun to monitor the temperature throughout your braking. Make sure it doesn't rise too high or drop too low. Okay, now for the oil bath. So I said I would return to it and here are my thoughts. The thing about the oil bath is that yes, you are heating up the engine because it's submerged in oil that you heat up to a certain temperature. Uh, you remove the 
head button and the cooling head and the back plate and everything is lubricated very well and because there's less because there's well no compression in the engine really just the pinch of the sleeve on the piston the stress on all the internal parts is less which is a good thing but the reason i don't view this as braking is that once you are done with that you still need to run the engine so it actually breaks in so the, the, the way I view the oil bath break-in is actually sort of a pre-break-in. What it does is it makes it easier to perform the actual break-in because the, the parts aren't as tight. But it doesn't eliminate the need to run the engine on the track and have it bed in. So because of that, I think that the, I, I, I don't see the oil bath as a bad thing. I just see it as an unnecessary thing if you know how to brake in your engines. If you are not very patient with braking in your engines and you don't want to deal with that, maybe the oil bath system is a good one because it will make that braking process easier for you. Uh, less things can go wrong. Uh, there's less stress on the engine when you actually start to run it. And maybe that's one reason why some people swear by it because they aren't doing that good of a job breaking the engine in normally. And then when they use the oil bath break in, there's less room for them to make mistakes once they run the engine. So it's up to you what you want to do. You can send your engine out and pay someone to have it sort of pre broken in with the oil bath system, or you can do it yourself. I don't see how from an engineer's perspective, I don't see how an engine could be better if it's broken in in the oil bath system. Braking happens when you run the engine. You have to run it because the temperature will be different, the environment is different. Uh, when you submerge the engine into the oil, it's saturated with heat in a way where it's uniform. But on an engine that's running, it's different because of the combustion process, the exhaust gases, the way the cylinder expands, it's not uniform. And because of that, the piston and liner, they will break in slightly differently once you start to run the engine. Another thing is that the fuel we use, if we have castor oil in the fuel, the castor oil will actually build up a surface on the piston. There's a process that happens where the castor oil reacts with the metal in the piston. So that needs to happen. So there are all these kind of things that only occur when you actually run the engine and there, there is an actual combustion event with the actual fuel we run. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the oil bath braking. It's fine, but it's not necessary. It's, it's just a sort of way to pre brake in your engines. So you don't have to pay so much attention to your own braking that happens at the track. That's my two cents.